only no that's not true I've just been joined by council president uh, uh, Eric Garcetti uh, what we will do mr. Uh, city attorney we will uh, until we have a quorum any action taken by this committee will be sent to council as a communique from the chair uh, with that said we have uh, several items that uh, we can dispense with quickly uh, with that said uh, Miss Barclay why don't you read items one Oh wait, I should make it official. Good morning, welcome to committee, good to see you. Uh, let me see what today's date is, Wednesday the 16th, yada yada. With that said, item one. <laughs> good morning, Meg Barclay, CLA's office. Item one is a communication from the Community Redevelopment Agency and the Chief Legislative Analyst and a resolution relative to various actions to the issuance of tax-exempt multifamily housing revenue bonds for the Alexandria House Apartments. Okay, then on item one, we'll adopt the CLA report as a communique from the chair. Item two. Item two is a CRA and city administrative officer reports and a resolution relative to the issuance of tax exempt multifamily housing bonds for the Hollywood Community Housing Corporation for the Hollywood Bungalow Court Apartments. Without objection, uh, we will adopt the CAO report on item two as a communique from the chair. Item three. Item three are reports from the CRA and the CLA relative to the construction and permanent loan agreement for the Asturia Senior Apartments. Okay, item three will adopt the CLA report as a communicate from the chair. <laughs> item, uh, where are we, four? Yes, sir. Item four is a CRA report relative to the authorization to pay 2007-2008 membership dues to the California Redevelopment Association. Okay, then we will adopt the CRA report as a uh, uh, communicate from the chair item five we will continue item five that brings us and I'm gonna just hold item six for a minute that'll bring us to item seven <clears throat> item seven is a report from the Los Angeles Housing Department and the city administrative officer and a resolution relative to a tax equity and fiscal responsibility act of 1982 public hearing held for the for several different housing developments across the city okay with that said we'll adopt the CAO report uh, item 8 unless there are concerns we will uh, continue that item for for uh, two weeks that brings us to item number six if you could read that item item number six is a community development department report and a joint report from the CAO and CLA relative to a community development block grant float loan to the CRA in the amount of $4.5 million for the purchase of the Ford Hotel. Okay. Um, do we have uh, representatives come forward on this item? Good morning. Good morning, morning Councilman. Morning. All right, we got two more good mornings. <laughs> I mean, I only got 50% say good, <laughs> good morning. morning. So the other two, you have to say good morning, or we're going to take you out back and beat the you know what out of you. So, good morning. Good morning. Okay, all right. <laughs> Who's going to start? I'll start off. Cliff Weiss in the Community Development Department. Uh, the CAO is proposing to um, purchase the Ford Hotel. The Community Development Department has um, looked at the proposal and is going to finance a portion of the purchase price through a Community Development Block Grant float loan. Um, the float loan is allowed by the uh, HUD regulations. Um, what we propose in our policy is that um, the float loans be made only to city agencies of course CRA is an allied city agency um, the float loan will be repaid uh, within the two and a half years that the regulations require that's it um, unless you have any questions <laughs> we, we, we have four other people why don't we uh, okay. Lisa Johnson Smith of the City Administrative Officer. Yeah, four people to give one paragraph. 
good to be in, it's good to be in government. <laughs> CRA and CDD each released uh, separate transmittals, um, and CDD, the, as proposed, CDD will give CRA a $4.5 million loan, which CRA will give to the borrow SRO housing for the acquisition of the Ford Hotel. It's a rehabilitation project. There are currently 295 units um, that are in need of re re rehabilitation. The plan is for CRO housing to go out and secure permanent affordable housing funds. Uh, the project is approximately $25 million. They would convert these 295 existing units into approximately 150 deed-restricted affordable housing apartments and or permanent supportive housing for extremely low individuals in the 30 to 60 percent area medium income which would result in a loss of approximately 145 units. Um, the current square footage of the units are 120 so square wait, feet. By me again. Would be a result in a loss of 145 <coughs> units. There's currently 295 single resident hotel units. So at the end of the day, it'll be 150? Correct. Um, the way the loan is proposed is that the agency would guarantee and pledge um, their tax increment dollars of $4.5 million to repay it back. Um, however, it is anticipated that from the permanent housing secured by SRO housing, that would actually be their repayment source. SRO housing is also going to put a deed of trust against the property, uh, and they would forward that documentation to CDD. Okay. Hi. Good morning. Uh, Len Betts, project manager for downtown, and uh, Joseph Cochran is with uh, SRO Housing Corporation. Maybe step back just a second, kind of put this, hopefully, in a little bit of context. Um, the agency's been working with the mayor's office and city departments on the uh, Skid Row strategy, a long-term strategy, and Lasar Development Corporation has been the lead consultant on putting together a 10-year plan on how to address the numerous issues facing Skid Row, housing being the, the principal issue in the area. Um, it, during that process, we've identified some 30 residential hotels that are under private ownership. We'd like to put under um, uh, a, affordable housing covenants, 55-year covenants that keeps those units available to uh, those people who are really in need in Skid Row. In that, of that 30, about seven have been identified as larger hotels. Uh, those with 60 or more units, the Ford, as an example, has just under 300 units. Uh, under private ownership, it's... Uh, so what, what makes it large again? Would you say 70? Oh, over 60 units. So we have, uh, there are seven of them. There's the Roslyn, the Ford, the Huntington, the Madison, the King Edward, the Leland, and the Baltimore. All total about 1,300 units. So the other ones, though, that are under the 60 are average how many? 30, 40 units. Okay. So we, uh, we've identified that as a first step targeting these seven hotels and, and getting ownership of them, renovating them, and, 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 and providing safe, secure housing that's, that's going to be there for the long term is a goal that we should strive for. And we've been trying for you know, a long time to do this. It's an expensive proposition to do so as well. Um, these particular seven hotels were chosen only because they're large hotels, but all seven of them, the Ford uh, included, are all at some various points of state where they could, they could be acquired. You know, there's a willing seller. We have, uh, in, in this case with SRO Housing, uh, uh, an organization with a good track record that can step in and purchase and renovate these units. Now let me tell you on the Ford, the units there are about 80 square feet maybe, without a bathroom, without a sink, without even a, a closet. So these are, these are pretty much bottom of the barrel units we're talking about. So um, we have... You, when you rehab it, you'll reduce them uh, the, the number of units to almost in half and expand them to what will the size be? About 140? It's about 400 square feet for the new units. And it, they will all have bathrooms in the whole. Exactly. Right now there is a water closet and a shower on each floor. So Wait a minute. I haven't heard. A water closet? A water closet. 
So, it's been a while. <laughs> these <laughs> units are, <laughs> the particular units in the Ford are kind of reminiscent of the old railroad flats in New York in the century before last. I mean, they're, they're in pretty bad shape. Uh, anyway, so there's a, you know, we, we, we have a strategy to go out and, and target these hotels. The Ford um, is presented as the first opportunity. SRO has been in discussion with the owner. They have an option to purchase the hotel. It's four and a half million dollars as opposed to some of the other hotels, which are uh, quite a bit more money. Their option expires the end of this month, so they're in a, and we're, in, we're in a state of ready to purchase this. SR has a track record they can go on and rehabilitate. They have a set of plans. While units would be combined, there would not be a loss of units per se because SR has about 270 other units in the pipeline to be constructed. So those, those would be new units coming on that will keep the number of units in Skid Row whole. So there's not going to be a, a deficit of units in, in Skid Row area. Last summer, this past summer, there is a, a discussion with us of block grant float loans as being a way to address, and I forget the term, the uh, timing the issue timeliness. of the expenditure of block grant funds. So the agency uh, spoke to our, our city counterparts as, a mean, could this be a means to fund some of these hotels? And so that's how we got to where we are today. You know, we, we said we have a list of seven hotels. They could be eligible for use of block grant funds for the float loans. It would, it would, it would speed up the process, perhaps. We wanted to do a test case or a pilot study using the Ford as, as the first example can we use the float loan process and as a means to provide the financing to acquire the hotel? SRO goes out, puts together their, fi their financing for the renovation and the takeout of the float loan. So that's what's being presented here and what, this, and what we've been working with CDD and the CAO and the CLA's office. So this is kind of a financing model of, of, of sorts. We hope. We hope. We uh, that you mentioned that there were seven big hotels. Yes, there are. Okay. Do they have water closets? <laughs> do they? Do you know, Joseph? I, they're on different configurations, but yeah. Or do they call them something else? <laughs> no, they have one bedroom, They have one toilets, closet. not water closets. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Uh, it is my intention, and I want to see if the council president has some questions. But we would recommend that we approve the joint uh, CAO and CLA report. Um, quick, quick question. Yeah, I would support so that too, Mr. Mr. Chair. Steady. I just uh, I wanted to ask about relocation. What's uh, what's the plan for relocation? Who's paying for that? Um, you know what happens. Obviously, some folks can be displaced, but what? Um, uh, how does that fit into both the financing of it, and then also as the units come online, are those folks relocated yeah. back in? Uh, when we first looked at this hotel uh, approximately two and a half years ago. Why don't you identify yourself? Oh, Joseph Corcoran with SRO Housing. I just want everybody to know that you no problem. are actually here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> relocation price tag was approximately $9 million due to the fact that there were uh, several families living in these units. Uh, today, the story is a little different. There are only a half a dozen families living in the units currently in the 295 units. There are also 89 vacant units. So the relocation price tag is more around $2 million, which makes the overall project feasible. Uh, we'll do a complete relocation study. We'll interview all residents. But we will actually own and operate the building for at least 18 months before anybody will be relocated and some of those people will be relocated into our own completed new housing. And, and uh, why, why such a jump down in terms of the families and the, the, uh, the vacant? Just because the city, the city uh, cracked down on code enforcement, et cetera. They required armed guards on site. There was a lot of drug and prostitution activity over the last few years. Mm -hmm. So through, through that and the owner uh, his willingness to sell. There were other deals that fell through because of that relocation price tag. And the owner, the current owner through attrition, has not rented out the existing vacant units. Yeah. And water closet problems. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
And also to add to the relocation mm -hmm. cost, um, it's anticipated to be between $1.5 and $3 million. Um, and the SRO's housing is going to go out and try to secure permanent uh, housing, uh, affordable housing financing. If they are unable to get the amount of money they need, which is the budget at this point is $25 million, the CRA, they'll come back to the CRA and there may be a discussion of CRA giving them a relocation loan. Um, and if that is the case, if it turns out that the financing does bear relocation loan from the CRA, the CRA will come back to the CRA board and the council for approval of any additional financing going into the project. And, and SRO is doing the, the relocation administration yourselves or are you contracting that out? We'll contract that out. Okay, but to, to, we don't know yet to whom, or do you? Uh, we usually use Shoburn Associates. Okay. Uh, however, because we're not going to be having to uh, deal with this for at least a year to 18 months, uh, we haven't contacted him yet. Okay. Thank you. Councilman, I also like to point out that uh, float loans, by their nature, um, have to be looked at very carefully. Uh, the Community Development Department will be evaluating each proposal that comes in uh, with an eye towards assuring that the block grant will not be negatively affected, um, that the, uh, the proposer, whether it be CRA or Housing Department, uh, has a, a verifiable source of repayment within that two and a half years, um, as, as well as the other federal requirements for eligibility and national objective. So how long have you been with the city? Uh, 27 years, sir. And before that, what, what did you do? Before the city? Yeah. I Was worked for the federal government. And before that? <laughs> <laughs> Went to college. So so you, you were never a salesman? No, sir. OK. Because when, when you made the sale, that's when you have nothing else to say. <laughs> okay, with that said, <laughs> without objection, uh, we will approve the joint CAO and CLA report. Uh, uh, Madam, uh, uh, Ms. Barclay, there appears to be no more business before uh, this committee. With that said, this committee is adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Thank President. You. Yeah. Can I get one of these? All right.